Hailed as a superior design by friends and rivals alike, the legendary Soviet T-34 medium tank raised the bar in armored warfare for generations to come. When it first came out, the Germans thought it was significantly better than the Panzer III and IV tanks that they had. The father of the Blitzkrieg himself, Heinz Guderian, admitted that the T-34 had vast superiority compared to German armor at the time. One German field marshal even went as far as to say that it was, in fact, the finest tank in the world. The Germans had to sit down and design a new tank, the Panzer V Panther, that was specifically designed to counter it. To keep up with the arms race, the Soviets developed a more advanced version of the T-34 that had numerous enhancements. The T-34 remained in service long after the Second World War ended, a testament to its great initial design. This mass-produced Soviet machine would play a key role in the Third Reich's demise, and its impact may still be seen on the battlefields 80 years later. However, the T-34 was not without flaws. While it is widely regarded as one of the most influential tanks ever built, some experts regard it as little more than a hurriedly manufactured death trap. Like most things, the truth is somewhere in the middle. The T-34 was powered by a rugged V-12 diesel engine rated at 450 horsepower, ran on a toughened-up version of the American Christie suspension, and offered the cruise speeds of 34 miles per hour, that were 10 miles per hour faster than the German Panzer III or Panzer IV. Furthermore, the T-34's high-velocity gun was capable of destroying any tank in the world at the time. The T-34's most notable feature was its sloping armor, which was uncommon prior to the tank's introduction, but became standard when it demonstrated its benefits. Many hits from enemy shells will deflect off the sloped armor and bounce away safely rather than penetrating. It's a way to provide tanks better protection without adding weight or slowing them down by adding more armor. In addition, the T-34 was incredibly maneuverable. This was largely due to the fact that it had far wider tracks than the average German tank, which reduced ground pressure and allowed it to drive over mud, soft earth, and snow, all of which are common in Russia, without sinking and becoming bogged down. Furthermore, the 1941 model T-34 possessed a power-to-weight ratio nearly 50% higher than conventional German tanks of the period, allowing it to accelerate, maneuver, and handle rough terrain with ease. At the time of its introduction, the T-34's armament, a 76mm cannon, was likewise quite good, when the standard German tank only had a 50mm gun. However, technology advanced quickly in this area, and by 1943, the T-34 had been outclassed by contemporary German tanks. The introduction of the T-3485 with an 85mm cannon, created in 1943 and entering mainline service in 1944, was the Soviet response, keeping it competitive. The T-34's reliability may be a concern, but it was also one of its strengths. The tank was built in a relatively simple manner, with the intention of being easily maintained in the field. If an axle or engine failed, a replacement could be installed quickly and the tank put back in action. A German tank with a comparable issue may have to be returned to the depot and repaired over several weeks. Because of this simple design, 
the Soviets were able to produce large numbers of T-34 tanks, despite the fact that most of their original factories had been captured by the Germans, and they had to hastily transport tank-making machinery eastwards into Siberia, and set up new factories there in the midst of a total war. During the war, around 65,000 T-34s were produced, compared to 8,000 Panzer IVs, about 6,000 Panthers, and less than 2,000 Tigers made by Germany, proving the point that quantity does have a quality all of its own. It had a decent fuel economy for such a large vehicle. This well suited the Soviet Army's deep operations concept, as a regiment of T-34s could drive deep into enemy territory before needing to refuel. However, the T-34 had its problems, something we often forget when discussing a tank with a legendary reputation. The fact that the T-34's turret only featured a two-man crew instead of the three-man crews seen on most German tanks was the most noticeable of the tank's genuine design flaws. The commander of a German tank was free to look around, looking for danger and opportunities to attack the enemy. The two-man turret crew arrangement in the T-34 required the commander to aim and fire the gun, an arrangement common to most Soviet tanks of the day. The two-man turret was cramped and inefficient, and was inferior to the three-man turret crews of German Panzer III and Panzer IV tanks. The T-3485 was upgraded to a three-man turret, which solved the problem. Radios were not standard equipment on early T-34s, and were only installed on special command tanks. The plan was for the commander to receive commands over the radio and for the other tanks in his platoon to simply follow his lead, they weren't expected to take initiative on their own. This was also addressed in the T-3485, where all tanks were equipped with radios. On the T-34, we should also notice how far forward the turret is. It reaches almost to the upper edge of the glassy plate, leaving no room for hatches above the heads of the driver and hull machine gunner, as seen on most other tanks. Instead, the two men who occupy the front of the hull are expected to enter through a large hatch in the sloping front plate of the hull. This not only results in an extremely difficult way of entry, but it also makes it much more dangerous to rush out in the face of the enemy. In addition, even if it is covered by a fully armored hatch, the opening in the front of the hull is not a good idea. It compromises the armor's integrity on the hull front. T-34s had poor engineering compared to other tanks of the time, and they were plagued by mechanical issues. Breakdowns were common, and some crews began carrying a spare transmission due to the frequency with which they failed. The Christie suspension, which also contributed to the cramped interior, also provided a bumpy ride over uneven terrain, quickly exhausting the crews. There are very few padded areas within the tank to protect the crew's heads. Instead, each crew is given a padded hat. The majority of the ammunition for the main gun is stored in steel boxes that make up the tank's floor, so after a particularly intense battle, when many of these are empty, the floor becomes rather uneven. The combined effect of these flaws meant that, while a T-34 might be a very formidable fighting vehicle in and of itself, its crew was limited in their ability to use its strengths to their full potential. They'd have a hard time being aware of the battle going on around them, as well as communicating and coordinating their actions with other tanks. To make matters worse, the majority of Soviet tank crews in 1941 were inexperienced and poorly trained. 
It should be remembered that the projected death rate of T-34 crews was about 70%, making them almost as tragic as the submariners of the Kriegsmarine. Out of a total production run of 65,000 T-34s, 40,000 were lost in the war. On paper, the T-34 was a brilliant tank, but in the circumstances that the Soviets faced during World War II, it did not live up to its potential due to manufacturing defects and the Soviets' lack of skilled tankers. The use of numerical superiority as a strategy to maintain a furious front against the Germans was used to fill this up. After a few harsh surprises at how tough the T-34 was, the skilled German tank crews quickly devised innovative tactics to overcome its strengths. The Soviets took longer to respond to this, but they did so eventually, and by late 1944, they were outfighting the Germans by clever tactics and strategy rather than simply throwing numbers at them. In the end, the T-34s have a tragic and glory-filled history, but they continue to be invaluable assets in the Soviet victory on the Eastern Front. If you have enjoyed watching this video, please subscribe and support the channel for more. Many thanks for watching.